Hey everybody, Scott Detloy here. Today we're going to play with the QR code monster, but we're not going to make QR codes with it. No, we're not. We're going to do some subliminal advertising. Uh, you can you can use it to drive symbols or logos, and there's that spiral that everybody sees all over uh, Reddit and so on. Uh, but we're going to actually drive the word shop into a shopping scene uh, using the outfits and the environment, uh, which is pretty neat. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do one additional step at the end. We're going to fix all the faces automatically uh, because unfortunately at this time, this control net is a 2.0. And uh, obviously we would like to do the faces with SDXL. So what we're going to do is we're going to load SDXL later and then have it do all the detailing on any faces that appear in the scene automatically. Uh, so this is a really great little workflow to kind of combine multiple checkpoints to use their strengths. Uh, so let's get going. So the first thing we're gonna do is obviously load a checkpoint here. So we're gonna load our 2.0 checkpoint. And in this case, I'm gonna use uh, this one. Now you can use whatever uh, 2.0 checkpoint you would like, it's totally up to you. And then obviously we need to do our standard thing. So we're just gonna convert this to a text here. I'm not gonna make this super fancy because we've done this a thousand times. So our positive and our negative and our VAE is there. Now, what we want to do is we want to introduce the uh, control net. So the control net comes after the conditioning here and we can double click and type in control net. And we see we have a control net loader right here. And we're going to load in, we're going to swap this out for the QR code monster, which I have right here. And if we take that and we drag that out, we can see control net apply and control net apply advanced. We're going to stick with advanced today because some other things we're going to want to do with this. And then we'll just hook up our conditioning here. So our positive and our negative. That's uh, almost the majority of what we need to do. Now this control net here is, uh, it's expecting, this this control net here obviously is expecting a QR code, but we're not gonna hand it a QR code. Uh, we're gonna hand it an image. So we're gonna need to load an image in. So just go ahead and pop in an image that you wanna use for this. And I've created a bunch of these. They're just 512 by 512 white background in Photoshop as PNGs with logos and text and what have you. And I created quite a few of these just playing around. I did one with cats, which was actually pretty fun because the word cats is very subtle. And that's the part of this that I'm trying to do is the subtlety piece, not the obvious swirls or other things like that. But hey, you do you. But I think this is a lot of fun. And this is the image we're going to use here uh, to drive everything. So we'll go ahead and hook that into our control net and it's gonna use this as the base uh, for everything there. And let's go ahead and get this going into a case sampler just like we would normally. So nothing special here, just hook her all up like you would. And we'll use an empty latent. And however, you could use image to image here if you wanted to bring another image in and convert it. Uh, so again, super flexible, whatever we wanna do here. Uh, we're just gonna throw an empty latent on here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually bump this up to 768 here. There we go, I bumped it up to 768. It's just what I prefer in this case. And uh, we're almost ready to go here. So we need to take this latent and convert it back into an image. So we'll decode it that we're going to need this VAE. You obviously you've done this a thousand times by now, but it's always good to see a rehash of it, right? And there we go. It's actually fairly straightforward. There's not a lot to it. You need to load the correct, the correct control net. And then you're going to apply that control net to the conditioning in here. It goes in the middle before we get to the sampler. So keep that in mind. Some of these things aren't exactly commonsensical and it's really interesting to see where the control net sits. Like a lot of people think that it's probably something it does with pixels, but this is way before we even get to the point where we're going to go mathematically go get those pixels. But I think this is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and give it a prompt here. And I'm just gonna use women shopping in downtown New York. And for a negative, now this is uh, 2.0. So we do need a negative in here. And this is the negative that was handed to me. Um, I really don't care about these things. By the way, I think it's really interesting that the artist name signature and watermark are, are oftentimes used here. And the reason it does this is if you think about every piece of art you've ever seen, like a museum and so on, is almost always signed. So it's kind of learned to sign its art. Uh, and it doesn't use the signature of an artist. It uses part of the prompt usually, which is really interesting. Uh, low res, and that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, poor details, okay. Um, I don't know why it's more important than anything else. And worst quality. Do we really think we have models trained on worst quality and poor details? Uh, I don't know. But we'll leave those in there just for giggles. Let's go ahead and uh, well, before we before we commit, <laughs> let's make sure we're good to go, good to go here. We have uh, 20 steps, which is fine. Um, all these things are fine. Let's just see what happens. We can kind of see it bringing in the people. Now, obviously, because the uh, face is a very small part of the total pixel resolution of the image, uh, when they're smaller in the frame, they tend to get a little wonky, as we can see here. But if we zoom out, we can see the word shop kind of in there 
it's not great, uh, but we're, we're getting close. And if you watch it when it starts to appear, um, you can kind of see what it's doing. So let's let's bump this up to like 1.4. Uh, be aware that when you use the strength here, uh, this can start to destroy the image. So we got to be a little careful with this. Uh, but this is uh, really the only way to do it. Um, and you see it starts with the word shop and then it starts to kind of build around it, which I think is really interesting. Here we go. So if we zoom out, we now see the word shop is a lot more obvious in there. Uh, so yes, it's, uh, it's something from the movie They Live right away <laughs> where we are influencing your behavior uh, subliminally. Uh, so let's take and let's fix the faces. Now to fix the faces, we're going to need to load in a completely different model. And uh, I want to do that with SDXL. So we're going to go up here to the top and just load it in like we would normally. Uh, in fact, you could actually do this uh, with a shortcut. Uh, but I think just to kind of keep it uh, sane, let's just do it the old fashioned way. Uh, so we're just going to load in the SDXL checkpoint here. I'm going to load in the refiner as well because the refiner uh, actually is much better at faces than the base. Here we go. And we will need prompts for all these things. But again, we're going to uh, we're going to do this the cheap way. In fact, let's just do um, EXL. We'll use the we'll use the refiner clip and we'll use the other one. And we're going to need uh, two of these for each. So we'll just do this real quick. Again, you take your time and make your template once. Uh, then you're good to go and you don't have to do this every time. But for, for today, we're just going to do it this way. Just kind of get this done. And I'm not going to worry again so much about prompts because we're just going to prompt for faces this time, right? Uh, so in here, we're just going to put beautiful. And uh, we don't need a negative prompt at all. And we'll put the same thing into Refiner. So that's good enough for me. To make this a little easier, we're going to use part of the impact pack, which is the pipes. Uh, so if we go in here, we type in two um, detail. We have a 2D Taylor pipe SDXL. We're going to use that because it have all these things and we're just going to hook them up real quick. Okay, now the detailer pipe also needs a couple more things down here. It needs a B box detector. It's the, the bounding box. And we're going to use Ultralytics for that. So we're going to type in Ultralytics. Uh, again, you should have had this installed when you installed the impact pack. So it should be included. And it's set to face. There's a bunch that come with it, face, hand, and person. Uh, we're going to stick with face here. We're going to use that beatbox detector here. Get this over a little bit. And then we're going to use we need a, a, a SAM model as well. If you drag that out, there's load SAM model or SAM loader. And the one that it comes with, again, is fine. So all these things come with the impact pack. There's really no reason to, to worry about going and finding them somewhere. They should come with it. And I'm just moving this so that the lines don't cross these nodes. Because if it does this, I might get confused as to what I'm looking at. So I'm just kind of nudge it out of the way a little bit. Maybe, I don't know. Again, we could sit and play with it all day long and let our OCD win, but we're not going to do that, are we? No, we're not. Okay, now from here, what we can do is pull this detailer pipe out, which contains all of that other information. And we'll just do face detailer pipe here. So this will go ahead and find each face. And you can look at each face if you'd like to. Um, so it'll show you the cropped refined as it's working or the mask or all that kind of stuff. I don't really care about these because it will show a display down here at the bottom. If under your manager here, you have your preview method set to this one, it will show a preview under the samplers here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So we don't have to use any of these. Uh, so I'm going to put like maybe let's do like 35 steps into the faces. 50% uh, denoise is fine. And the rest of the defaults are pretty good to go. Um, we do want to force an in-paint though. In case it's too small of a face, it would normally skip it. Uh, so we want to go ahead and make sure that it gets caught here. At least that's my understanding of how this works. Okay, now... We need to feed this an image. Now, the great thing about this is once we have pixels and we're not dealing with conditioning anymore or latent that's come from another model, once we get to pixels, we can do anything we want to do. So let's go ahead and drag this image up here and we'll just effectively start over right from this point here. Uh, I'm not going to save this one anymore. Uh, we're going to use this one as um, our final. So we'll put this here and then for this one, I do want to see it though, just for giggles. So we'll do the preview image and we'll put them kind of over here together. Something like this. Uh, so that should do it. Let's let her rip here and see what happens. Kind of see the word shop here, but um, faces are going to be a little wonky. You can see it going through and correcting each face. We'll expand this so it's working. face detailer is very nice. Again, it comes with the impact pack. 
And if we don't like what we get and we think we want to do better, you can always run this into another face detailer. There's no reason you can't just chain these together and do whatever you want to do. Again, that's the great thing about Comfy is you can really kind of play with the whole workflow until you get something you really like. And there we go. So we have good looking faces ish eh, for the most part. Again, it's going to be random every time. At least they're not floating <laughs> another problem. Again, it's the 2.0 model. Um, I'm really hoping we have an SDXL version of this one pretty soon. So there you go. You have a workflow that takes whatever mask type image you want to and applies it in a subtle way. And you can do image to image if you just want to replace this empty latent with another image and then encode it and pass it in. So you can do whatever you'd like to do in here. But then we added the ability to fix the faces using SDXL and the refiner. And this one note here from the impact pack to kind of make all that happen. So again, you can stack these if you want this one to kind of rough it in and then do another pass to kind of make sure you're getting all the details. That's cool. But you can do whatever you want to do. Just save this off and you're good to go. So thanks everybody for watching. I really appreciate everybody, especially those people who are helping to support the channel. Once again, couldn't do this without you guys. And I really appreciate it. Uh, everybody take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you all next time.